To do an even quicker example, let's take a micropoly star. Let's go down here and type in 5 tab 5 tab 5 enter. Hit Q grid. Turn on polyframe. Let's turn on transform. Activate symmetry in the X and Z. I'm going to use my Z Muller brush, BZM. I'm going to hover over an edge. I'm going to say insert single edge loop. We'll insert an edge loop here. And I'm sorry, X and Y direction. So I can insert a edge here and here. Hold down Control Shift. Isolate this middle portion here. Hit Control W. So now we have an inside piece and an outside piece. And it already fits perfectly within this square. So now if I go back to my polyplane here and we turn off micropoly, you see this is the result we get. We turn micropoly on and then hold down control and grab that mesh we had. And if you have a hard time seeing where that is, just go back to this original one and hit rename and say, name it something. So now when you go back to your plane here, you hold down control, you know exactly what to grab. Use this. So now every single one of those faces has been replaced by this. We have fit and weld turned on. So we can actually use this as a cloth simulation and use these red polygroups here as masking. So let's talk a little bit about that. The first thing I'm gonna need to do, if I'm gonna make this a blanket with stitching on it, I'm going to have to go up here and I'm gonna say append Polymesh 3D, select the Polymesh 3D, go down here, say Q cube, and let's go out of solo mode so I can see both of these. And on our floor, let's turn off Z. So if I take this and move it down and scale this out, we're gonna go ahead and make a bed. So here I have a bed. Let's go back up here, turn on dynamic. Let's say, let's turn up Q grid just a bit. We'll turn smooth subdiv down to one. Change our coverage so we can kind of round those corners off and we'll change this to chamfer and not bevel, so we get a nice smooth bed look. So now let's alt tap this, and you're gonna see we have a bed going. Now if I want more squares, all I have to do is go up here to smooth subdiv of one and turn that up. And if I wanna maintain these corners a little bit better, I can go down here to crease and just hit the crease button to crease my open edges here. And then when I go to smooth subdiv of one, that'll maintain those corners just a bit better. And I can also, if we go down here to the bottom here and turn on display properties, doubles turned on, let's turn double off. And let's also add a little bit of dynamic thickness. Now there's one problem with this. You're gonna see when I turn on dynamic thickness, it gives me very small micropoly here because if I turn off micropoly, you're gonna see I have a very thin face here and it replaces that face with the micropoly. So one thing I can do, let's turn thickness down to zero first. Let's hit W, hold down shift and rotate it. So our blanket is above our bed here. And in fact, we can probably scale this down just a bit. Now, if I run the simulation now, let's go up to our dynamic menu and just drag this over here. We have gravity turned on, we have floor collision turned on. Let's go ahead and turn on collision volume so it calculates this bed as a collision volume. And then we to choose run simulation. Uh, it's going to run, and it runs a little bit fast. We'll turn that gravity strength down a bit and we'll run it again. And you're gonna see it's super low res. And again, that's because if we turn micropoly off, there's not hardly, there's hardly any geometry here. This is not a lot of geometry. So what we can do is we can turn this into real geometry. So we can say, apply this dynamic here. So it's gonna make this micropoly real geometry. So now when I run the simulation, it has much higher resolution and now it behaves more like a real blanket. So now if you go in here to BCK for our cloth hook brush, we can go through here and we can kind of pull this around. And again, we have enough geometry here for this to behave like a real blanket. And I can run the simulation and it'll collapse on the bed again. Let's go ahead and turn self collision up to one. And we'll use our cloth hook brush to kind of pull some wrinkles and then we'll run the simulation again. If I go into solo mode here, you're gonna see we don't have any real geometry on the backside. 
We can fix that now, so we can go in here to dynamic. Uh, let's turn micropoly off. We don't need to turn every single face into another micropoly. So we'll turn that off, and we'll go down here to the bottom, and we'll turn up thickness. Now what this is going to do is copy this topology and give us dynamic thickness on the other side. So if I keep cranking this thickness up, you're going to see, instead of it replacing these side faces with the micropoly, we don't even have micropoly on. So now we're just getting real thickness on that geometry. And this is going to be important because what we're going to do next is mask where the red is and inflate. If I do it now, it's not going to work because again, this isn't real thickness. There's no geometry there. So if I go through here now and I say, turn on inflate, turn off gravity, floor collision and collision volume, and run the simulation, the entire sheet is just going to lift up. And that's because there's no real geometry for it to inflate against. So if I turn off dynamic and run it, you're going to see it's just inflating against nothing and it's just going to fly away. So what I need to do is go in here to dynamic, go in here to dynamic, hit apply. And now what I'm going to do is hold down control shift, isolate these squares, control shift drag to invert, control shift isolate these squares. I'm going to hit control W to make these all one polygroup. Control shift drag to invert that selection. Hit control W to make both sides of this all one polygroup. So now I can very quickly go through here, hold down control shift and isolate the big squares. Control tap in my document to mask everything I see. Control shift tap to bring everything back. And then control tap to invert that selection. So essentially what I've done is mask all of the blue polygroups which is going to keep them in place. And now what I can do when I run inflate, and we have real geometry here, if I run inflate, it's going to keep everything masked and it's going to inflate against itself. So if I turn off floor and control drag to unmask and go here to startup material, it has something to inflate against so it kind of balloons out like a pillow. And in fact, if we go in here to dynamic, we turn off thickness and we turn off smooth sub of, of maybe two or one or we can actually add subdivisions here. So you hit control D to add more geometry, control shift tap to isolate these squares again, control tap to mask everything, control shift tap to bring everything back and control tap to invert that mask and then run the simulation. Because we have more geometry, it'll give you even finer wrinkles. And of course you can still go through here with brush cloth hook BCK and pull this geometry around and get these wrinkles as well or BCU to go to cloth nudge and kind of go through here and nudge your cloth. Of course you maybe want to turn off inflate and then you can go through here and you can start pulling this cloth around a little bit.